Welcome to my first God Guide update on the channel. I've already covered Erlang in a video before during Season 5, but his passive was changed slightly and of course there's been new items and other ones have been buffed or nerfed and playstyles have changed over time, so I'm going to update this guide for the Season 6 meta. If you have any other old guides you want me to update, then do let me know down in the comments. I'm looking to do one new guide and one updated guide every month. But let's get right in with the contents of this guide. So first up, we'll cover Erlang's basic playstyle and overview then abilities in depth and the best ways to use them. After that, items and builds where I'll discuss my favourite items, why I build the way I do and a full build example. And finally, we'll finish off the guide with some tips and tricks for Erlang. So let's dive in with Erlang's basic playstyle. So Erlang is very flexible in the way that he can play. He can fill a typical frontline solo lane warrior role, but he can also be very effective in jungle and support on top of that, which makes him always a valuable pick to know how to play and have in your arsenal, because the enemies never really know where he's going. Erlang likes to fight in sustained long fights and win bit by bit for the most part, utilising his sustain advantages and high damage basic attacks to win long fights over other warriors in solo lane and support as well. But from the jungle, he can definitely fill a more bursty, almost assassin-like role for the team when you build him right, which of course we'll cover later in the build section. Alright, so let's move on to covering all of Erlang's abilities in depth and how to make the most use of them in your games. So Erlang's passive is his Celestial Dog. His dog will attack enemies every time Erlang hits them with a basic attack, the dog will hit for 15% of his basic attack damage and 1% of the target's maximum health on top of your regular basic attack damage. The percent max health damage only affects gods and minions though, so you won't be doing things like 1% of Fire Giant's max health on every hit. So this passive isn't something you need to build around or pay attention to really, it's just extra damage on your auto attacks to make them hit that little bit harder. But don't underestimate it, that is quite a lot of extra damage on all of your auto attacks and it makes Erlang very powerful, especially in the early game. On to Erlang's actual abilities, starting with the one, Spot Weakness. This is a basic attack steroid that gives you extra physical damage on each hit of your basic attacks. So you can already see the synergy starting to come in with Erlang's kit here. He's very focused on auto attack synergies. The only other thing to note with this ability really is that the damage counts as ability damage, so it can proc items like the Crusher or Brawler's Beatstick, however it will only proc them once per cast of the ability, it won't keep applying the effect on every single auto attack. Erlang's 2, Pin, is a ranged circular AoE damage ability, and any enemies in the centre of the circle of the ability are rooted for one second. So this ability is definitely Erlang's most simple one. Basically, you just use this when you need to CC someone, be that to lock them down so you can pump damage into them with your basic attacks, or to enable follow-up CCs and damage from your team onto that target, or to buy time to run away. Basically, if you need to keep someone rooted, then use this ability. Erlang's 3, 72 Transformations, is definitely his most important ability in my opinion, and mastering this is a large part of mastering Erlang. So this is a slow progressive dash, and you can choose either turtle form or mink form. In mink form, you pass through minions, dealing damage to them and stopping at the first god also doing damage to them and then gaining an attack speed boost of up to 35% and haste for 4 seconds, allowing him to chase down that target while basic attacking and suffer no movement penalty. In turtle form, you gain a health shield upon activating the dash of up to 215 health that lasts for 12 seconds. You pass through minions and gods, knocking up gods you hit and move slightly slower than you do in mink form. So in my personal opinion, people severely underrate the turtle form of this ability. Having access to an on-demand instant knockup with decent damage and a health shield, that can be cancelled at any time so you can continue fighting is insanely strong. I always refer to the way I use this ability as the turtle cancel. And basically, I get into melee range, activate the turtle for the knockup on the target and immediately cancel the ability. So while the enemy is in the air, you can just burst them down with auto attacks buffed from spot weakness and the passive. And if you get fast enough with it, you can knock them up and cancel the turtle within half a second and just beat them down. Mink form isn't useless by any means, and in a jungler scenario, when you're building more damage items, Mink can be extremely strong, but Turtle is usually the better choice in boxing situations because you can absorb 200 plus damage in shields and stop them doing damage to you while they're knocked up, and overall it improves your boxing potential instead of using Mink. But for chasing a kill when you know they can't get away, Mink can definitely be very strong with that haste, just overrated I think. Okay, that was a lot for one ability, but it was definitely his most important one, so let's move on to his ultimate, 9 turns blessing. This is a quick cone taunt in front of you and a delayed heal. While you're waiting for the heal, you also gain damage mitigations. So this ability is really three smaller parts that all combine to make a very versatile and powerful ultimate. Each part on its own isn't incredibly strong. A decent heal, decent damage mitigations and a quite short taunt aren't amazing. But all bundled into one cooldown, they become much more powerful than the sum of their parts and utilising this ability effectively requires recognising each part and what they can do for you in any certain situation. Maybe you want to tower dive so you can ult to mitigate some of the damage the tower does to you and heal up afterwards to make sure you don't die. Or maybe the enemy team is on fire giant and you can blink in to hit 4 people with that taunt and have a follow up ultimate from your mage. 
in which case the healer mitigations are lesser to the taunt aspect of the ability. It's all about evaluating the situation you're in and which part of the ability you need and playing around that. But that's it for abilities, let's move on to covering Erlang's build choices and some example builds. So for this section I'm going to be splitting it into jungle, support and solo lane builds since Erlang is viable in all three of these roles and you can't just use one build across three different roles like that. So this section might be a little more brief than usual because I have basically three times as much material to cover than I do for someone who's viable in one role. But let's start with jungle starting builds given that's his primary role right now. For jungle, you want Assassin's Blessing, Tier 1 Mace and 2 Potions, the layout of which is up to you. The Mace will be finished into the Crusher as your second item in the build, but before you do that, you want your boots for that all important mobility. The best set of boots right now for Erlang in jungle are Talaria boots, hands down. The mobility they provide is super useful for Erlang since he uses a lot of auto attacks to stick to targets and of course that slows you down, so having that bonus 7% movement speed on your boots over other sets of boots is super nice. I think Ninja Tabby are also pretty good given how well Erlang uses the attack speed early on, but as of right now they're outclassed by Talaria boots. So once boots are done and you've finished your starting mace into the Crusher, you can start diversifying your build to fit the current match and your personal preferences. So here's my item pool that I usually pick from in jungle. Stone Cutting Sword is a sort of no brainer given Erlang's fast swing chain and tendency towards auto attacks. Giving 50 power, 30 penetration and 30 physical protections once stacked up, it's very efficient for the cost given how easily Erlang can stack it. Winged Blade is not completely essential but extremely useful on Erlang given how his 3 works. You aren't slow immune in either form of the 3 and getting hit with a heavy slow in the middle of your 3 really screws you over. Plus it's quite hard to stick to targets if you're constantly slowed so if the enemy team does have significant slows I can recommend Winged Blade highly. Ikovel is sort of like Stone Cutting Sword in a way and that is great because Erlang can stack it up so damn fast and once it's fully stacked it's one of the most cost efficient boxing items in the game. Especially if you're fighting another auto attack heavy god like a hunter for example. Executioner should be your go to item for dealing with tanks. It's not 100% necessary every game because sometimes you just need to focus the squishies and don't need to shred the tanks, but once again Erlang stacks the passive of this item extremely fast and makes much better use of Executioner than Titan's Bane for his percentage penetration. Masamune is also really nice for Erlang. Movement speed is very valuable for him so having some extra is always really nice, and this item is just a good all rounder option, giving some health, protections, but also some power too. Magi's Cloak is my go to defensive choice on Erlang over anything else. It's cheap and gets the job done, giving you a little extra survivability from the health and protections, and that CC immunity can be life saving. But I don't dislike Mantle of Discord either, if you want to go that more overall tanky build sort of playstyle instead of just full damage and Magi's Cloak, it's more up to you on how you like to play him. And finally, Toxic Blade is sometimes necessary against heavy healing comps, but of course this is very situational and not something that you need in every game. Alright, so let's cover a full build example for Jungle Erlang before moving on to Solo Lane. Start with Assassin's Blessing, Mace, 1 Health and 1 Multi Potion. Grab Talaria Boots, then finish your Mace into the Crusher, then get Stone Cutting Sword, Winged Blade, Executioner, sell your Blessing for Magi's Cloak, and if the game goes long enough you can replace your Boots with Masamune and get the Elixir of Speed. Your two Relics for Jungle should be Blink and Beads in whichever order you prefer for your playstyle. Okay, let's move on to Solo Lane Erlang builds. So for starters, you want Warrior's Blessing, health chalice and 4 health potions so you can sustain it lane. You don't need mana or multi potions in solo lane for the most part due to blue buff and the totem of coup, so you can just stack up these health potions and out sustain people in the laning phase. Then your first item should be berserker shield. This gives you insane sustain in the laning phase due to Erlang's fast swing chain, proccing the item many times quickly. Since the heal is a flat value and not based on damage you deal like lifesteal is, a bunch of low damage but fast swinging attacks are really great for Berserker Shield. Then after Zerker Shield you want your boots, which should always be Ninja Tabby and Solo Lane. The extra attack speed means more Berserker Shield procs and more damage overall because of your one and your dog. After those two items you really need to start counter building and considering the enemy team, so as always here's my item pool that I pick from. Against a physical lane opponent, Void Shield is my go to defense item for the laning phase. It improves your ability to fight so much with the protections and health combined with the penetration and power, there's not much this item doesn't offer really and it's great for Erlang. If you're against a magical laner however, I recommend Pestilence if they have significant healing like a Hell or a Changa, and if they don't then get Genji's Guard. All three of Hide of the Urchin, Spirit Robe and Mantle of Discord are great for general purpose defense once you come out of the laning phase and have to start dealing with varying damage types from the enemy team. Just be careful with Urchin as it does take a while to stack and it's not very cost effective if you can't get the stacks quickly. Winged Blade applies the same way it did for Jungle Erlang if slows are giving you trouble, especially with your 3. Pridwin is very good right now as you build tons of protections on solo lane Erlang and that shield really helps with surviving as you dive backlines and draw attention to yourself. 
It might get nerfed, but as of right now, it's definitely worth considering for Erlang. For more physical defense, try my Guardian Mail. It helps deal with auto attackers really well, and if you need more magical defense, I can recommend Oni Hunter's Garb, since you're often fighting many people at once as a solo laner and get good benefit from the mitigation passive. As for damage items on solo laner Erlang, I'm not a fan of them too much, but if you just need some damage to carry plebs, I can recommend either Masamune or Stonecutting Sword for similar reasons that I gave in the jungle section. Alright, so let's get that full build example blasted out before we finish up with support items. Start with Warrior's Blessing, Health Chalice and 4 Health Potions, and grab Berserker Shield first, followed by Ninja Tabby, Void Shield, Genji's Guard, swapping the order of those two if you need to, Spirit Robe, sell your Blessing for Mantle of Discord, and if the game goes long enough, trade your boots for Masamune and get the Elixir of Speed. Your two relics for solo lane should be Teleport first and then Blink. Alright, finally let's cover some support build options. So for starters in support, you want Guardian's Blessing, Tier 1 Boots, 4 Health and 2 Multi Potions. Your boots of choice should be Talaria boots for that extra movement speed for rotations and general movement around the map, but if you feel you enjoy being more tanky early game over the mobility, you can also grab Reinforced Greaves, it's up to you. From there, you want to go into a typical aura based support build. Gauntlet of Thebes, Sovereignty and Heartward Amulet are all great pickups to give your teammates that extra defense. Spirit Robe and Mantle of Discord are both great for general purpose defense and dealing with CC or being focused out respectively. For more magical defense, only Hunter Scarb, Pestilence against the Healer or Shogun's Kasari if you have a heavy basic attack comp are all great. For more physical, Midgardia Mail to deal with auto attackers or Emperor's Armor for extra sieging capabilities and defending against sieges. Relic Dagger is nice since it will reduce the cooldowns of your very important relics like Shell and Sprint, plus having more blinks available for engaging is always nice. And finally, Winged Blade, as I've mentioned in the last two sections, is great for dealing with slows when they affect your 3 so heavily. So onto that support for build example. Start with Guardian's Blessing, Tier 1 Boots, 4 Health and 2 Multi Potions. Finish your boots into Talaria Boots, then grab Gauntlet of Thebes, Sovereignty, Heartward Amulet, Spirit Robe, sell your Blessing for Mantle of Discord, and if the game goes long enough, you can sell your boots to get Relic Dagger and the Elixir of Speed. Your two relics in support should be Shell and then Blink in that order. Alright, so let's finish off this guide with some tips and tricks to up your game on Erlang. So a massive part of being good at Erlang, in my view, is knowing the three in and out and when to choose which form. For me, I think the Turtle is the correct choice much more often than Mink, and you will often want to use it in melee range, so it's not really being used as a dash, more so just a quick melee range knockup to confirm your damage or set up other teammates. You also have to learn the timing of the heal on his ultimate and play around it. You don't want to go into a fight or dive a tower expecting to have a quick heal ready and then realise it's on a pretty sizable delay. I wouldn't rely on it as a quick heal to make an outplay or dodge dying, it's more an ability you need to plan around and think about when you should use it. Basically don't dive back into a fight at 20% health and ult expecting to live because you probably won't. And finally, spot weakness will not reset your attack chain like most other abilities will. This does mean you can AA cancel with it, but it also means you can charge up your attack chain as normal then activate the ability just before the big AoE swing and activate the bonus damage on multiple targets. This is most useful when clearing both jungle camps and minion waves, so you can hit 3 targets in the AoE with the bonus damage from spot weakness. But that's it from me on this one. Let me know which guide you want to see updated next, and I'll catch you guys in a new video later on. Have a great day, and peace out you nerds.